I wanted to test if a completely normal character who's not Dragonborn can live in Skyrim on survival modes on expert difficulty and make a successful life without dying, which I've decided will end the challenge. So, meet Sven, the son of a warrior Nord who left the Cyrodiil and became a successful merchant. Sadly, his wife left him for a younger man, taking most of his money with it. He packed his bags and, using the last bit of money, got on the next ship back to Skyrim, wanting to start over. And so, our adventure begins in Dawnstar, with the help of the alternate starting mod. Right, so I'm in Dawnstar, which is freezing. That damages my health and stamina on survival, so I'm stuck here for a while. Plan is, earn some cash, make some supplies. So I think my best bet is doing some iron and silver mining, because at the minute, I've not got much. Find a pickaxe and get to hard labour in the Dawnstar mines, taking anything of value that won't get me in trouble with the guards. I think if I smelt the quicksilver and keep selling any gems I find mining, I can make some good starter money. And then with the iron ingots, I should only need to buy leather and a couple of other bits to craft armour and supplies for leaving. I think I want a backpack for carry weight and a campsite for sleeping. And I'll probably need a fishing rod to get some food as well. Plus, before I leave, I need armour and a weapon. But buying all the supplies looks more expensive than I thought it'd be. I might be stuck here for a while selling these ingots, but I definitely need it before I leave. For the next few days, I slaved away in the mines of Dawnstar, collecting iron, silver and gems only stopping in the local pub for food and rest and to craft my ingots. After all of this, I had enough to craft everything I needed. When I got to the crafting, I went with a full iron plate armour, paired with iron sword and shield, which at least protects me a bit and was the best I could craft with my money and skill. And after crafting my backpack, camping set and fishing rod, I was ready to leave for somewhere where I could make some easier money. I decided to get the boat to Solitude as there's a few quests I can remember which will get me good cash and I could possibly join the Imperial Legion if I'm really desperate. Plus the weather isn't as harsh so I can get more done. Citizen. Running low on food, I found Catler's farm and helped myself to some of the crops. By chance, I spoke to her and found out you can sell the crops you pick. Then, when I went into the farmhouse, oh, I, I noticed you? something oh, very you. strange. Honest pay for honest work. Fall apart. Oh, this is weird. I can take all the food and start classing it as stealing. I'm sure these were all reds when I came in before I spoke to her. Oh well, I'm taking it all. It's been costing me so much money to keep this hunger bar up. Before leaving, I found poor Orphan. I can just about afford to keep myself alive, so I left him in the cold rain. But I'll remember him for later in the challenge. And to top off my first day in solitude, I saw a man be executed. What a place this is. I once captained a ship called the Argent Raptor. Before starting the next money making idea, I enjoyed a nice meal in the Winking Skeever until I was driven mad by the drunk next to me spouting constant rubbish and headed to bed. I stole a few things from the room to sell, which down the line proved to be a huge mistake. Ooh, the room even comes with a little mini bar. I think I'll pinch some of these. I don't want to spend any more money than I have to on food. Ooh, and some potions as well. I'll take them, sell them. Easy money. You're passing through solitude? Maybe you're looking to make some easy gold. Yes, my hmm, so I can't really remember this quest, but I think I'll do it. If I can make a few hundred gold, it'll be worth it. I can start doing a bit more crafting and, and making money, so just turning this money into extra funds, really.
I make my way to the Solitude Lighthouse and put out with a gust of breath, and then speak with Jari Ra, who sends me to the boat to collect my loot. Black blood marauders. She knows to expect you. You're the one who put out the fire in the light. That was good work. Deja's in the hold of the ship. Go down two levels. After nearly freezing to death in the water, I find the boat and head inside, making sure to loot everything in sight before I finish the quest. It's only then that I realise I've been used, and now this idiot is stuck in a fight I'm not levelled for. Oh crap, I don't need this. I'm not levelled for these fights. I've got absolutely no combat stats at this point. She's an absolute tank as well. I'm barely doing any damage and my health bar is going down. I think I might die. I didn't bring any potions. I'll have to spam it and get lucky or I'm done. Ah, what's that? Oh crap, I don't need this. I wasn't expecting a mage. I just need to stack him so I can't be hit. Maybe get a heal spell off if I have a chance. See, these people are absolutely beating me. Oh my, I'm somehow alive. I need to heal badly. After fighting through the bandits, I leave and stupidly decide I want revenge. I head to Broken Old Grotto to kill the stupid lizard. Right, I'm here. If I use my sword, the death only gonna kill me. Last time was too close for comfort. So I'm turning into the classic stealth archer for this. Shoot Roma from spotted, and don't laugh because we all know we've done this. While I'm here, I'll grab this level up, I'll probably go for a one handed damage increase. And I'll do a little fancy archer montage as well, so you're not completely bored in this cave. I think most of them are done, but this captain is tough. Shoot and run has definitely happened here. I'm dead. Couple of shots and run to this little corner and hide. Like, <laughs> that's the best option. To take him more hours and borrow me to die, he begs for his life. No. No <laughs> what a sad end. He could have went out with a bit of dignity. Right, now just to beat the lizard man and get some loot, I'm hoping to get some good money, because this was not worth the risk. Oh, man, that's pretty easy after all. A good haul of jewellery and weapons from this raid I have enough to live on. So, I head back to Solitude to make some sales and get some hard-earned rest and beer. After a couple of days of rest and selling, I've got 1800 gold, but spend some for a better bow as I think I'll need to use that tactic again, leaving me with 1600 gold. Back and we'll be off. With all of that done, I decide to take the car to Whiterun. Maybe a bit easier to do some quests as the enemies won't be as tough. First stop as usual is the inn. BM music normally makes the tough life of Skyrim a bit easier. In a weird way, I sort of wish I was in Skyrim. It's quite a cosy little pub. I wish it was somewhere around the UK like this. First thing I do in White Run is the blacksmithing quest for some easy money and upgrades, and to start thinking about other methods I can do to make money. After finishing the quest and selling the proceeds, I head out for some adventure.
My first idea is to go and see Helgen. Because I've used the alternate start mod, the main quest hasn't started. And since I'm technically not Dragonborn in this challenge, I want to see what happens. But, the first stop is Riverwood, and while there, I decide to help out poor Feindal get with the girl of his dreams. And say it's from Sven. I think I've matched that Nord's lack of cleverness perfectly. Another poem, I bet. He does know how to make a girl blush. You know what, I think I'll help him out. But I've just remembered I can marry Camilla. I might cause some chaos. Help only to steal away when I've got a house. Plus, if he's a follower, it might be useful down the line. I'm not speaking to him anymore. Alright then. Just before I leave Riverwood to carry my journey, I spot out the corner of my some people who don't seem to fit in. We're here to teach you oh lesson. crap, someone's got thugs on me. This is not good. I'm so strong at this level. I'm literally doing no damage. There's no way I win this fight. Yeah, no damage. It's time to run. I cannot take this. They're going to kill me and I don't want to win the challenge right now. Right, so I hopped in the water and got across the river, and I think I've lost them. But I feel if I don't kill them, they're just going to keep hunting me down. So I'm going to try and <laughs> do the stealth archer tactic again. Okay, it's working, and they can't seem to figure out how to get across the river. So I'm just going to keep shooting and hope for the best. Uh, this is the only way I survive, I think. With the help of some dodgy water pathing and a wolf, they end up dead. Hopefully, there's no more. I also find the contract and find out the owner of the Wink and Skeever wasn't too happy with me stealing his potions. In fairness, I thought it was the Skyrim version of a minibar. I recognise that name. I'm, f I'm sure that's the guy from the inn we stole all the potions from. He I did not think he'd send that after us. After nearly dying, I head back to Whiterun to regroup. I know I don't have enough heals to survive, so that's a priority. After levering my heavy armour and bow damage, I head into the alchemy shop to get crafting. Uh, as long as you clean up. You know how to use it. A little wheat and blister wart makes a healing potion, if you didn't know. While eating some ingredients, my alchemy skills come flooded back to me. I remember that blue mountain flowers, butterfly wings and wheat all mix for health potions. You know what, this could be a really good money maker if I keep level on alchemy. I know where all of these ingredients are and then if I can get a house with some slots to grow I can really ramp this up. And then I just can sell potions, buy a house, all the upgrades and then challenge is pretty much complete. Well, having another night on the town, I remember there's a farm you can own that came with the anniversary DLC. So I make my way over to Rorikstead to see if I can buy it. After making my way there and stealing some crops, I find it. Oh, what the hell? Why is there a ghost? If I'd known it was like this, I'd be asking money off the house from the estate agent. I'm not after a haunted house. Killing the ghost, I realise the house is tied to a quest, so thinking I can get something, I head inside. Oh god, this is really creepy, I'm not sure if I want to buy this now. Oh great, there's a weird underground lab. If there's a child catch a basement, I'm out of here. Luckily, the basement wasn't to hold captive children, but there was another ghost to kill. Oh crap! Why is there so many jump scares on this game? After investigating the house, I knew I had to find the missing son of the owners, and after 30 minutes of looking, I found him dead by a well. Oh! Is this him? I think I need that sword, and then I can go and buy the house once all the ghosts are gone. And I think I'll be taking that gold, you won't need it anymore. 
After returning the swords, I had a nice surprise. The farm was given to me for free. I thought I needed to buy it, but all of a sudden I've got money to invest, and I can start up the next phase of the plan, potion farming. Yes? Thanks a lot! Here, take this, for all your hard work. Oh well, that saves me a bit of trouble. For some reason the kids can just gift me the house once I've found his body. After planting wheat and blue mountain flowers to get a steady supply of health potions, I needed to find a steward to help her on the farm. And who better than Feindall, back at Riverwood, who we can get as a follower. The poor guy is now entering a long distance relationship to work for barely any cash. I drag him across Skyrim and bring him inside the murder cannon, I mean farm, and hire him on the spot. And for some reason, he's fine with it. I then need to hire farmhands, so I wander around, start with Riverwood. The local drunk needs a job, so who better to bring on board? What could go wrong? How much? Is that right? Sure. The mercenary work? I head back to White Room for some potion seller, and after a few conversations, find Brenwyn, the drunk beggar. So I hire him. I've now got the dream team working for me. From 12 pm, though, after they've sobered up from the party in the night before. After returning, I need to get some accommodation for the drunks and some basic farming and blacksmithing stations. So I get to work getting the construction materials, which are mainly wood and iron components. I also need stone for the building and there's some near rifting, so I grab that. While there, I get an amulet of Mara so I can get married. After a quick stop back in Riverwood to craft iron fittings and get some supplies, I'm ready to get some buildings done. Okay, let's get the bunkhouse for the drunk, stop them sleeping on the porch, then the rest of this should be fairly handy. I definitely need the blacksmithing station so I don't need to travel all of the time. After making the bunkhouse, animal pens, workshop and getting some planters, the farm is looking fairly good. Okay, I still need to do a little bit more building, but it's coming along pretty well now. Just a few more materials, I think. I was trying to do a nice aerial shop, but for some reason it sounds like there's a toilet flushing in the game. I'm not sure what it is. And after getting some profits, I buy some chickens to increase cash flow and buy the alchemy station and some goats for the rest of my cash. Now, like the top G, I've got passive income from livestock and can start churning out some potions. Very good. I'll make all the arrangements. Okay, definitely need the alchemy station and I've got some cash, so I may as well get some goats as well. Hopefully starts earning a bit more money for me. Is there anything else you need? And finally, before bed, chop some wood, finish building the apiary, windmill and stable to complete the farm. Now I should make some good money so I can finish the interior. No, I'm really happy with this now. I should start making some passive income through uh, Feindall now as well. Maybe you've already met Camilla Valerius. Noticing the farm is a sausage fest, and Feindall keeps mentioning Camilla, I decide to go on an adventure, just not one he'll be happy with. I want to use my amulet to marry Camilla, but I'll need to finish off my Helgen plan to do that. After a couple of days of growing and making potions, I head to sell at Riverwood, and then make my way over to Helgen. In this universe, it's just being destroyed, and I see Alduin fly off to wreak some havoc. <laughs> Look, there he goes. Oh well, that's not my problem this time. Head inside Helgen, I find a journal on a corpse detailing the Dragonborn's journey and the Helgen attack. It points me to the cave you leave after the tutorial. Oh, 
I don't think I can be bothered with this, but I think I have to do it for the claw quest. I'm not sure if it spawns in otherwise. In the cave, I find Hadvar curled up in the fetal position, crying and injured. After healing him, the main quest is now active. So this is what Hadvar is without the dragon, but he's pretty pathetic, isn't he? After rescuing, I head to Riverwood for the 19th time to speak to Hadvar's uncle, and then head to Whiterun to speak to the Jarl. Then, after speaking to the wizard, Operation Steal Your Girl begins. I'm starting to feel a bit evil for doing this to, to Feindal, but oh well, it's, it's happening, it's too late now. I head into Bleak Falls Barrow and clear out the bandits who are luckily still quite low level, and scummily kill the spider to free Arvel. Not before I attempt to assassinate him though. Oh, get back here, you little rat. I just wanted to pit pocket you so I could move on. I didn't want to kill you. After killing him, I decide to finish the dungeon as there might be some nice loot. Hoping it wasn't a mistake when I get to the dungeon boss at the end. After fighting through, Completing the puzzle and spam locking the Draugr boss, I was done. I had some nice loot to sell and have the Golden Claw to return to Camilla so I can steal her away. Okay, if this guy hits me, I think he might do some good damage even though he's still quite low level, so I'm just going to spam hit him and I hope I survive. Uh, I'm just doing full scum tactics on this playthrough. I head back, return the claw and propose, and without a second thought to poor Feindal, she accepts. <laughs> oh, poor guy, I really feel bad now. It's too late to turn back though. I head to Riften to kick off this marriage, and before I know it, I'm at the altar. It is from her love of us that we first learn to love one another. May they journey forth together in this life. <laughs> Didn't know Fainter would be here. I'm just rubbing it in his face at this point. It's so cruel. Do you agree to be bound together in love now and forever? Congratulations on your wedding. I am so happy for both of you. Oh, there's no way he's congratulating me. He's going to murder me in my sleep at the farm. <laughs> there's no way I survived to the end of this now. Hello, my love. Divine smile on you. I return home and collect some massive profits from Feindal, who still hasn't forgiven me. I invest in the master bedroom, just so he knows I'm about to consummate the marriage. Is there anything else you need? After that, I get to work making more potions so I can sell and finish the house. Start with the kitchen, where poor Feindal made his feelings known. Is there anything else you need? Hello, my love. Back from some adventure, I bet. If only Camilla shared my affections, or even knew about them. Oh god, I'm evil. The poor guy's getting ignored while she heads up to the bedroom. <laughs> it's just torture now. After another white run selling trip, I buy the children's bedroom, dining area and loft. And with that, the house is complete. Honestly, I think I just need to adopt and the challenge is done. Surely a family and a farm is success for a normal life. I don't think I need to do any more adventuring or anything like that. And with that thought, I remember the street urchins I've passed on my adventures. Start with poor orphan Lucia in Whiterun. Who I let cross the dangerous lands to my farm on her own. I'm dad of the year. I need to get my things and say goodbye to everyone. I'll meet you at home. Thanks. 
thanks so much. I'm sure she'll be fine. <laughs> it's not like there's anything that can kill you out there. I then head back to Solitude to Blaze, the poor lad who sleeps outside in the stable. After feeling guilty about leaving him last time, I adopt him. And again, leave him with an even bigger journey on his own. But if he dies, he was a stupid kid. It's not my fault. And after an emotional chat with my new children, the challenge is complete. But not for her, an MTV crib style house tour. Thank you so much for watching this challenge, please leave a like and subscribe and I'd appreciate any feedback you could give me to improve future videos.